guys so I'm in my plant room and I was thinking since it's been a long time since I have showed you all my plants that are under lights to give you a tour of all the plants that I have here also tell you what shelves I'm using what trays I'm using and what lights I have here so I had IKEA metal shelves storage shelves and I replaced them with this Costco shelves that are a little bit deeper few inches deeper and they're also um, a bit wider so I can actually fit exactly four trays here and they're deep enough I must say that these shelves are a little bit heavier so when you're installing you may need somebody else's help but when you have put the wheels on it, on them you can actually move them in spite of the uh, how heavy they are so I'm overall really happy with these shelves and they fit so many plants and lights here. I have uh, four different rows of uh, with the lights. So on the bottom here, um, I actually turned them off because they're really pink. I have my oldest lights. This is High Grow and King Ball. And I know uh, for you, for all of you who have watched my channel before, you know that these lights have given some beautiful colors to my succulents in the past um, and then right above that row i have the newest lights so all the slides and then the newest lights these are the lights that my friend amanda that volunteers with me uses they're called uh, barilla um, led grow light uh, or maybe not barilla maybe it's B-A-R-R-A-J. Anyway, I will post the link. They, they're sold on Amazon and they're probably some among the cheapest lights you can find. They're also a little bit pink, but you can see better uh, how your plants look than with the, the high growing king bow. So I would really recommend you these lights. They're, they're inexpensive and I mean, just look at the colors underneath. They're maintaining the colors really well. Look at these orangish and pink tones, and then I have some blue and then dark red. I mean, there is such a, a variety of colors under these lights. They're really doing great. And then right above the last or first two row are the spider farmer lights. These are awesome lights. They are very economic um, they give you this nice natural white um, color um, it's not the white color it's like a daylight and uh, you can exactly see how your plants look they're a little bit more expensive than the other lights but they are definitely worth it so i have two uh, thousand spider farmer lights and then i have a 300 one and this one probably is not enough to cover all these plants here on the first shelves. And I know on the edges there is some paling or stretching because uh, the light cannot reach. Um, so those are the lights that I'm using. I think Kingbo and Hygro are no longer available if you're trying to buy them. Uh, but you can find definitely this Barilla or however it's called and also spider farmer lights. Uh, lights really make a huge difference if you're living in a cold state like me uh, and you have like seven months inside. So if you want to have Echeverias and all those grepto varieties, you need to have a good source of light. All right, so what I'm going to do now is show you, you know, what I have on each um, shelf or in each row starting with this first one where i'm keeping chrysoulas so this first one is all chrysoulas the next one is euphorbia and chrysoula mix and then second half is just like echeverius and grepto petalums greptocetums and those varieties so on the top shelf i have some of my chrysoulas string of buttons and i'm going to pull this one first i'm just going to show you how much this one has grown it's crazy so this one i purchased less than two years ago and it had about six branches that were maybe uh three inches tall the most 
and you can see guys how big this is now and if you want to know how to take care of this plant um, that is one of my top favorite i will post a, a link to the video in the description of this video look at that and and if you watch my video on full you can see how much this plant has grown since just during the winter time i think it needs some trimming because you can see it's just like hanging here so i'm waiting to get them outside and then i think i'm going to trim this one a little bit i think it also needs more light you can see the spacing here is kind of bigger i i wish it's a little bit less uh, they can have a more compact spacing like here or here and they can get also nice red edges but this one is not getting enough light because it's also very big um, then okay next to it is my other um, string of buttons this is some kind of hybrid I have trimmed this one a lot um, as you can see because it was kind of hanging but this one has kept compact look for the most part there is some areas that I had to trim on this side where it was turned toward me away from the lights and it just wasn't getting light on that side at all and the middle here also is popping a lot of new growth so I'm excited to see what happens with this pot as the as it goes outside um, everything is really thirsty because I'm preparing to visit my family and I'm gonna be gone so I was trying to adjust the watering to the day before I leave and um, I, I left everybody uh, for 10 days without the water so today I have to water them so this one is a bit dehydrated you can see how leaves are soft and wrinkly a bit that's a sign of uh, being thirsty you can especially see on these bottom leaves how wrinkly they are this is Crisula rupestris I have a lot of this one I have a few pots in a conservatory. I have two pots here. Get some beautiful blooms, uh, light pink blooms, and uh, yeah, I just love my chrysalis. Okay, so let me pull this tray down so you can see close up the chrysalis that I have in this tray. All right, so first one here is Chrysula Baby Surprise. Um, I have propagated it last year because it had like a really long bare stems and it rooted. And now there is a lot of new growth popping up. Uh, I have also sold few more than a few branches. And then it was attacked by something here. It had some brown spots, but overall it's, it's doing okay. Um, there is an intruder here, guys this is a bear paw um, and i love it i love this plant and look at those beautiful blooms so i usually keep this one with chrysalis i have always done that as you can see it's quite dry look at the wrinkliness on the leaves again this one is also good to show you when they're thirsty so they're wrinkly then here is my big chrysula brevifolia that I have for quite a long time. I don't know if I should trim it um, because it's getting a little wide. We'll see. Um, this is the cuttings that I took from the Crisula berifolia and they all rooted. So I'm starting another pot of this one because I really do enjoy it. And then here I have a Crisula uh, spiralis. This one reminds a lot to Buddha's temple and it is as fussy as Buddha's temple I have lost it many times in the past um, we'll see what happens with this one um, this is I think Chrysula jade necklace really stressed color you can have a more green look um, if you're not if it's not under uh, lights um, then here is, I think it's called Crisula Height Voltage. So this is kind of similar to Repestris. It can get this beautiful red uh, color on 
edges of the leaves. And then here is another uh, Crisula rupestris that I have. Needs a little bit of cleaning. This is a pot from Ikea that I have for a while. So as you can see, these are all potted in terracotta pots mostly, and I think that they're happy like that. Okay. So how are my little chrysalis here? So this is columella. It's doing okay. Um, look at how much my barley has grown. I don't know if you remember how this one looked when I got it. I think the biggest branch was as big as this one. It was quite small. And even though it had some drying up, it also had some new growth popping up. And this branch kind of grew quite a bit. Yeah, I don't know if it's trying to open here to pop another branch. I'm not sure, but I'm really happy about that because that's a pretty rare one. I'm glad I kept it alive. This is a Korean import. Um, I don't know, I have it a few years. It didn't really grow much. It struggled with some kind of rust or pests. And um, yeah, this is Crisula Deceptor that got so long and heavy. It was just kept falling out like it was kind of like this. So I ended up chopping the top. And it's actually rooting, guys. You see little white roots here? So. I think I chopped it a week ago. Hopefully it roots before I leave. And yeah, and hopefully this one will grow something out of it. So this is very similar to Crisula Deceptor. I think Plegma Toetis or something like that. But it's a more round. This one is more like straight than round. Anyway, this is um, these are cuttings of variegated Tom stump that I recently took. And I think that they rooted most of them. But they're quite dehydrated, as you can see. I need to water them. And then I have a variegated Crisula munglo here. This is variegated rupestris that I got from, I think, leaf and clay. But I'm really not happy. Since I got this one, it's, it's like this. It's like really not doing that great. And doesn't grow very much. So not really... It wasn't expensive, but I'm not excited about it. This is a variegated baby's necklace or fantasy. I think it's called fantasy chrysula. I think that this is Rupestris monticola, which is different than Brevifolia. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that these are two different ones. Um, there is very slight difference in the... These leaves are more round. Uh, then these um, from my research. So I, these are the cut. I got these as cuttings from Plants of Joy. They were super dehydrated and they rooted and plumped up. So yeah, they're looking really good. This is another pot of Crisula Jade's necklace. So this would be, I think, the same one as this one, actually, guys. But they look different. This one has more of a green color than that one here and this is just a regular <laughs> tom stump chrysula so this is regular and then you have seen the variegated one just a minute ago and then this one oh my gosh I, I think I forgot the name but it's something purple I think not purple delight I, I can't remember but it's really cute little chrysula. I love when the leaves get like that deep purple color. It's really pretty. Um, and then I have here a uh, Cuban oregano. And it smells really good just because there was some space here. And then on top shelf, there is only two more plants um, or three more pots. There is one of my variegated jades. Pots. This is a smaller one. I have a bigger one. And then my big Crisula Munglo. You can see. There is one really long branch and then three smaller ones. And then I also keep my Litops here. Yeah. 
So that's the first shelf. All right, so let's take a look what we have here on the third shelf. Um, this is it's not the raindrops. It's the one that gets uh, like a uh, ruby, I think a ruby necklace. I have neglected this one so bad, guys, and it was dry a lot, and it lost so much leaves, and then didn't get enough light, so it was getting green, and spacing was bigger. So recently, I started taking care, better care of this one. But yeah, and it still looks nice. Um, all right, this here, I'm really proud of this one, guys. It's so pretty. This was a little plant, maybe like like this size with a few rosettes that I bought from gas farms and then it got grew and grew and it has this bonsai look it's so beautiful I'm not gonna pull everything from here but I have the giant crassula string of buttons which is called ivory towers it's really big it's in a bigger pot then I have some euphorbias here this is variegated corn cob this is tanzanian zipper plant then i have some propagations of bones euphorbia and then i have my beautiful guys beautiful chrysula i love the look of this one so cool and maybe since i have pulled this one out you can see this one here which is a mini jade again I really like the look of this one and I trimmed it so much but it's still kind of all over the place a bit leggy uh, so it's hard to keep it under lights so it's kind of in between the lights you can see it gets a little bit from this side a little bit from that side but there is some uh, parts that got a bit more green you see and stretched to, to not having lights and then there is some that are quite you know red and orange because they're getting light but it's gonna be okay as soon as it goes outside um, here's some more euphorbias this is by Oriensis. and then this one I forgot <laughs> I if you remember it had some really bad branches and I cut them and then it grew new branches on those cut spots and now this pot looks so nice I'm very happy with it look at this guy guys it's blooming this is restricta cursula tiny little yellow blooms so cute but i have here um my pride and joy uh, my variegated monodanium richie that has quite a bit of pops guys there's like one two three four five and then there is one coming here they're all a bit dehydrated because it had leaves and they all dried up so i really need to water them more forgot the name of this one um, this is uh stellata euphorbia also quite dehydrated this is two big lands gift from my husband hybrid then i have um few other ones here uh, Debilispina, Debilispina, I don't know how you call this is popping a lot of pops these are propagations of um, cotyledon or biculata but you can see it's like very wrinkly I don't want to touch it to take off the film because it's still producing roots um, this is Medusa Flanagani I think um, Euphorbia uh, this one here, Pseudoglubosa, if I remember. And then I have this little one. If you remember when my husband purchased this one as a gift, this one ar arrived as a gift from seller. It has grown quite a bit. Look at these. These pups are getting bigger. And then these two little ones started growing. I think it's adorable. It's also some kind of tubi glands hybrid. Really cute. All right, guys. Well, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to water these two trays that I have on the floor so I can put them back. And then after that, I'm just going to take out each of these trays uh, 
and show you close up what plants I have on them. So here are all of the four trays that I have uh, under Barilla lights and I'm gonna show you trays that I'm using now quickly. So these are bootstrap farmers. I will leave the link. They're amazing. So sturdy and it saves me so much time guys. So instead of soaking the pots what I do is just I keep uh, running the water through the pots because I can just empty the tray. I lift this up and I empty the tray and it's all ready to to go. So I can actually sometimes water all of my 300 plants in the house in an hour if I'm really like efficient and fast which is awesome. So this tray here if you watch my previous videos I have showed you recently so these are some of the Echeveria Gavoides varieties. Here is lipstick. This is the new addition. Look guys how beautiful it is. I think it is already established. It's firm. Um, this is the intruder. I forgot. I always keep forgetting the name of this one. This one I think is a little bit dehydrated still. Even though I just watered. This is the new one. Look at how pretty it is. So... I'm not going to go into details with these ones because I'm assuming you watched the video recently. A lot of Agvoides varieties and then Perpersorum propagations. There's Echeveria 2 white form and the darker form and then just propagations of all of those. So here is the next tray. I have some bluish uh, and greenish succulents uh, like this Pachyphytum compactum that has very bonsai look, aged look. And then I have, I think this is Elegance, Echeveria, and this one here, Violet Queen, doesn't look good. I think I'm gonna, I'm, I'm questioning if this is some kind of powdery mildew. So I'm gonna separate this one on the side to be sprayed. This is a uh, Topsy Turvy, I think. And um, Elegance Blue, Echeveria. I forgot what these are. I think Holy Gate Echeveria. There's two little ones. This is the propagation that I recently did. Oh yeah, it has root, nice roots. I shouldn't have pulled it. <laughs> this is Pachyphytum brectosum. And then I have some Amatorums. Uh, this is Snow Bunny. I recently traded this with well actually it's more it was more like a gift from amanda i think it's really pretty like has that white coating so very light blue color echeveria this one here ramiret i think it's called echeveria i got this from plants of joy as a cutting it's established it's getting a little bit of a reddish on the bottom of its leaves this one here used to be crested form but a lot of it dried up and now I have just these individual rosettes. This one was purchased from Lowe's. Looks like lime and chili but it also has some kind of interesting variegation on the leaves. This one I got from Trader Joe's but it got pests and I ended up removing the leaves on top. So hopefully it's gonna grow some rosettes. I think it is already. Here it is. One rosette is growing here. So yeah, anyway. All right, well next tray. I have uh, Corpus Colaria Lakemani, a smaller one. Um, this is imported plant that's variegated got the name. I'm just really bad with names today. I usually know them really well but anyway. Here is my Litops that grew a bit bigger. They were really tiny babies when I got them. Then I have Onslow Echeveria that's imported Echeveria and this is the propagation of the same one. So these are all rosettes from, uh, from the stem that was left over after I beheaded this top here that's blooming. This is a Chiveria Lola and this is a Chiveria Lola. These are cuttings that are rooting. These are some 
each plant. This is one of the new additions that is kind of still um, really tiny. So we'll see how it grows. There is a Tiberia Summer. This one is, I think, California Sunset. Really red color. Really beautiful. This is Lilatina. I don't know what's your experience with this Echeveria, but I always have it really being dry under lights. So I don't know if it would be better not to keep it under lights. Not sure. Uh, this is my new addition, Echeveria Rainbow. I think it's established, it's rooted. And then I have Myrne, um, some kind of Cryptocetum. This is, I think, some kind of sedum or gruptocetum, I can't remember. This one here, guys, this is mold, I think, or powdery mildew. So this one will have to be moved. And look at how beautiful it is. So this one's going to be sprayed for tray um, in this section. So I have here um, Murasaki, greptovaria, I think, or greptopetalum. Then this is Neon Breaker. Uh, these ones I kept losing because they always get mealybugs, very sensitive to mealybugs. This one, Cubic Frost, it was crested form, but I also have some uh, that are growing individually, rosettes. I love this one. Oh, guys, this is so cute. Baby toes, baby fingers, something like that. Uh, baby fingers. But the colors are really beautiful. It has some new growth coming up on the bottom. So and that was Kylo running around. And uh, this is Pachyphytum, Moonstones, some more Pachyphytums. And then I have a little Echeveria prolificus that I'm trying to grow bigger. This one is not growing very much. This is supposed to be Pentandrum superbum variegated one. This is propagation from a leaf, but I don't see much variegation or glow, grow lately. Um, these are little baby Murasakis. And then this one, I don't even know what this is. I'm not 100% sure, nor this. And then I have some ghosty looking plants like these here. And this is something Pachyphytum that I recently got from Amanda. And this is one of the Korean imports, Echeveria Sunyon, um, that gets really pretty pink color. So we have one more row of succulents to see. I'm just going to have to put these back. All right, guys. So this one doesn't have a lot of stuff in it. Uh, this is my raindrops. As you can see, the problem that I had with high grow lights is a lot of which areas really, really shrinked. And this one was beautiful for a long time, for years, and I don't think it's doing as good. Uh, it, need, it needed the cold temperatures and a break, and I'm going to take it outside. Actually, I think I'm going to take most of these plants outside this year and see how they do. This is one of the imported plants, I forgot the name, but also shrank quite a bit. Um, this is uh, Superbum Pentandrum. It's pretty. It looks kind of more of a bonsai look because it has those branches and it's preparing to bloom on two sides. So that's exciting. This is one of my ghost Greptopetalum uh, plants. Uh, propagations that I did and separated over time. And then I have, I don't know, this is I think some kind of sedum. All of these are from the same plant. I'm not 100% sure what's the name, but it has like brute green and pink on the leaves. It's pretty nice. This one here, I think it was called as White Prince. I am suspicious it has white mold and I'm gonna 
separated from the rest into this pile here that I have that's going to be going outside. All right. Here in the middle, I have a propagation of one of the echeverias that I have in conservatory. It's really large. Uh, then I have a dusty rose. This one had a really bad infestation of mealybugs. So I ended up just removing the middle with the hope I'm going to get some more growth here. Then I have um, Echeveria prolifica. You can see how pink it is under lights. This is Echeveria summer that's blooming. This gorgeous thing has been blooming so much. I actually just cut the big bloom that was in the middle. And there is two more bloom stalks that they're opening up but it's really beautiful and it has a lot of rosettes coming up on the side so there is one two three in total um i don't know what this is some kind of grapto thing oh yeah there is another chrysula this is chrysula baby's necklace a little bit different than jade's necklace and the reason why i moved it under pink lights is because it started stretching under one of the spider partner lights which never happened to me before look at the stretching here on the top so i don't know maybe it needed more intense lights so that's why i put it there and then i have a few more this is i think bella or something echeveria i got it at all sip garden center near chicago and then i think this is a patchy phytum of some kind really cute it's been blooming and then i have two mensas they also are very sensitive when it comes to millibugs but they're hanging in there so all right and then the third tray i have uh, is this hagai toluminensis or maybe not i'm not 100 percent sure but anyway uh, this one was also attacked by pests, but it's not looking that bad. Um, it's maybe it's a little bit harder to see. Let's see if I would turn these lights away, because I think I'm getting a little bit of pink from those lights. This is, I think, um, Adolfi Golden Sedum. And then I have some kind of Cheveria here, I forgot the name. These are all propagations of one of my ghosties and I think it's actually they have rooted yeah they have established this is Opalina that I just recently beheaded and I it's just waiting to for it to root and this one here I think it might be purple delight the one that I have million off of <laughs> yeah so yeah so that's it that those are the plants under lights Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and uh, see you soon in the next video.